Thanks for watching the Garbage Family Show. This is a video on how to make your own garbage truck that really works, powered by a Peg Perigo 24 volt ride along toy. The recycle truck we built, it was constructed on a Peg Perigo Razor 12 volt system. And the, for the new truck, for the garbage truck, we're going to construct it on the Peg Perigo Razor 824 volt system with a trailer attached. It runs about uh, eight and a half feet long. And in first gear, it'll do three and a half miles an hour. In second gear, it'll do seven miles an hour. So this one is for bigger kids up to 10 years old and uh, about 150 pounds is the max, max weight for this vehicle. The first thing you need to do when you start constructing your garbage truck is to remove the light bar slash roll cage from your vehicle. The entire thing has to come off as well as the side side panels because you're going to want to make it as easy as possible to get in and out of the vehicle for your child. You also will want to remove the front grill as that's going to get in the way of your of your uh, front of your garbage truck. Now that the light bar and the roll cage have been removed from the vehicle, the next step is to secure the trailer so it doesn't pivot behind the main body of the vehicle. And the way we're going to do that is to attach drill holes in the front of the trailer and in the back of the vehicle, and then affix it with some zip ties. And that will keep the trailer from pivoting when you go around corners. And that adds stability to the vehicle once you build the frame on top of it it's not trying to move and break apart on you. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Dad. What are you doing? Build a new garbage truck. Hmm. Sounds simple. Sounds simple? This video isn't a step-by-step -step explanation on how to build a truck, but just an overview as no two trucks are quite the same. The construction of your frame is a critical step to the entire vehicle because everything is built vertically off of this frame. But I didn't show the step-by-step -step process of building this frame because it's very simple. It's simply two eight foot long common boards that you can purchase in any lumber yard or Home Depot or Lowe's. You attach it to two support beams that run across the front of the truck and trailer in the back. I had the baseboards drop down about six inches to make it easier to get in and out of the cab of the vehicle for the driver and the passenger. If they are up higher, there's kind of a tripping hazard to get in and out of the seat. The frame is complete. At this point, it rests on the front grille of the vehicle with plenty of tire clearance. So when the wheel is turned left and right, it doesn't rest against the frame of the, of the truck. It runs the length of the vehicle. And then it, the back part is supported over the trailer axle area. And we've centered it. You measure the, the halfway point of, of the width and you center it front and back with the vehicle. So we're working on the roof and the size of the truck now. You see it's, it's uh, 42 inches in height and 40 inches wide. It's important to note that I always pre-drill the wood because it, it, it keeps the, the wood from cracking if you're just gonna screw it in. And I don't use nails, I use, I use screws. So that's, that's important for integrity of the wood to keep it from splitting. I like to get the kids involved in helping with the construction of the truck whenever possible. Whether it's measuring or painting or even screwing in some screws. It's quite helpful and they seem to enjoy it as well. In this shot, you can see the progress that has been made on the front cab of the vehicle. Now we're working on the main chassis, which is a little bit higher in elevation than the cab because that's the way garbage trucks are designed, where the chassis is larger than the cab. 
and in the interior of the chassis you see that white board at an angle that has a purpose which I'll explain in the next shot. But now we're going to start working on the exterior frame of the chassis and then eventually the hopper, the compactor that goes on the very back end of the truck. There's essentially three components to building the truck. There's the cab, which measures out about 31 inches long. There's the main chassis or the hopper, which, which we measured out to be about 51 inches long. And now we're working on the rear of the truck, which is just starting to take shape. And I anticipate that's gonna be an additional 31 inches long. The base, of the hopper and we have a slant here that's going to keep the, the trash from going too far deep into the, the chassis of the of the compactor and then we're going to build the hopper that's going to come right up underneath this now that the cab is complete and the main chassis is complete we're working on the back end the back end is going to come off about three feet from the, the tail end Half of the hopper is finished. It's much more of a challenge cutting wood at an angle, as you'd find out if you build your own truck. It's probably not gonna be perfect the first time you build your truck or the second time you build your truck, uh, but you're building this for your kids and they just wanna have a fun experience. So if it's off a quarter inch here or there, it's okay. And plus when you put the foam board over top of it, it covers a lot of those, those imperfections. Here's what the truck looks like with half of the hopper constructed. The next step is to build the lower basket all the way to the other side, and then we'll create the blades down the middle to compact the garbage in the hopper. A little tip in helping you construct your garbage truck, it's helpful to have a model to scale garbage truck to build off of, and also make lots of notes and blueprints to yourself on paper before you ever start construction, because you'll see just in the design work, uh, what may work and what may not work, and, and that'll save you a lot of time by drawing it out first. This part has proven to be quite difficult. I'm trying to create the trough for the hopper, and it needs to be in some lightweight material that is smooth so they could scoop in and then up into the compactor, but the material I chose is more cardboard than wood, and it's just very difficult to cut it straight. It's a process, you just gotta be patient with it, and then use the short little wood screws to tack in it. I've completed the trough and moved forward to construct the upper portion of the blade. It's fixed and won't move. The lower portion of the blade, the kids can detach it and compact the trash into the main chassis. With the construction of the frame complete, we're going to do a test drive to see how the frame functions with the vehicle underneath it. We are just inspecting it for any fatal flaws that may prevent the vehicle from operating normally. The frame is not connected or tied down to the vehicle itself, so this is just a, a preliminary trial run. This is first gear. Okay, just go forward a little bit. Come, come right at me. The test drive worked pretty well, so the next step is to paint the frame. Roman and Gracie really enjoy helping Daddy with the paint. So we give them some masks and a couple cans of paint and we go to town. the center of the truck body to the center of the motorized vehicle. So it's right down the center line. It's time to put the foam board onto the side of the vehicle or the skin. And to do that, you'll need one of these razor blade devices, a pencil and a tape measure, a staple gun. You'll also need some tape 
in this case white because we're building a white garbage truck. Uh, in the Recycle 77 we use blue tape, obviously. But that, that's just to join the edges together uh, so it looks more uh, connected. And it's a nice complement to the color scheme. Here's an inside tip on applying the foam board to your truck. Your child's gonna sit in the seat and they're gonna wanna have some, some headroom to move their head back and forth. You might have a, a natural tendency to just bring this backboard all the way forward parallel to the, to the seats, but then they can't rest their head back without damaging the board. Cause this is, this is really soft material. And so you scoot it back uh, maybe four or five inches behind the seat and it gives them a little bit more headroom to maneuver, especially when they're getting in and out of the vehicle. So it's important to, to set that back a little bit, even though it exposes some of the, 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 the undercarriage, it's just a much more comfortable ride for your child so to have a little bit of extra room back there. Another helpful tip is you can see that there's space between the lines of the foam board. That's, that's totally okay because as you see with the Recycle 77 we built, you cover that with the tape. Uh, so you wanna press down on it, you can see how there's space in there. That's very helpful because sometimes you'll, you'll make a mistake cutting your foam board. And that, that well here's a mistake right here. And You'll make a mistake, but that tape will cover that up and it'll look, it'll look like it, it's never even there. So it's very helpful. And also I try and put the staples along the seam because that'll get covered up by the tape too. This is a look at the interior of the truck before I put the external skin on. You can see the hopper uh, where the trash is collected and then scooped up into the chassis. Uh, you can see the metal hinges where the blade is going to hang off of where the kids detach it and then scoop the trash into the truck testing the hopper for first time a quick note that i chose to use a blue sheet to connect the blade to the truck for two reasons one so you don't see the trash inside the chassis of the vehicle and two to keep the blade attached to the vehicle otherwise you're, it's at risk of just falling off the truck or being set aside and driving away without it i had to switch these off because uh Mommy. because roman just had a difficult time pulling us back to release it and then it would keep bending and breaking so this is a much easier eyelet situation. You want to hook it back up there, Roman? Sure. And we replaced the board from plywood, which was a risk of getting splinters to a cardboard stock. All right, we're going to staple on the last foam board. It says, please don't litter. It's important to Rowan. He wanted the message for his garbage truck to be, please don't litter. We're applying the safety reflector stickers down the side of the truck. They'll be on both sides as well as the back. It's good for nighttime driving, not that we do too much of it outside of Halloween. Uh, but it also helps to cover the seals between, between the panels. One improvement that we made over the, the original Recycle 77 truck is that we added a side mirror because the truck does have some significant blind spots. In fact, uh, the driver can't see behind him or her to the left or the right. So this, this mirror almost gives 90 degree vision and all the way to the side of the truck. The trim work is very important to the aesthetics of the truck as it seals the foam board panels to each other and gives a nice finished look. Uh, if you have contrasting colors, like in the Recycle 77, a dark blue and a lighter blue, it uh, definitely makes it to stand out. The truck is finished, with the exception of the rotating beacon. It's gonna go up on top. I'll put that up there tomorrow morning. Note, the beacon is battery operated. It just needs to be screwed onto the top of the vehicle. And we're going to put the name of our show, Garbage Family Show. We'll put the stickers on the side, but in a week or two. We have them in stock. They're, they're up there. 
but uh, just not feeling like it's time to put on there. We like the the clean look right now. So the trunk is finished. It took, well, I'd say about 100 hours and 13 days. If you have any questions about how this garbage truck was made or the recycling truck, comment below. We'll be happy to answer your questions. If for some reason the comments are disabled, because sometimes YouTube will uh, interfere with that, then you can reach out to us on Facebook. Just go to Garbage Family Show on Facebook and reach out to us there. And also I'll put a link below on how we built the recycling truck. It's a separate video about three and a half minutes long. It could give you additional insight as well. And if you have kids that like garbage trucks, be sure to pound that subscribe button as Roman would say in our videos. We always put out kid-friendly content and we thank you for watching.